Uh, Chuck, we recently met with uh, prophets from all over the world, and you were with us. And uh, give us a little snapshot of what you felt, and then we're going to jump in with what wow. we felt. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I, you know, last Cindy, since you prophesied to me uh, before COVID began that I wouldn't be traveling, and you said, I don't know how God will do this. My life has changed so drastically, <laughs> and I've watched the Lord through these last three years take me on a progression where I can only go to certain places when he sends me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, once he pulled me out of 550,000 miles a year, <laughs> he had to reestablish my path again. That's very hard for some of you that are listening. You go through seasons in your life where you have to submit and let the Lord redo mm -hmm. everything in you. And uh, last year, he allowed me, to, uh, this year that we're in right now, he allowed me to go to 10 places. And one of those places was the gathering that you and Mike host in uh, the, the uh, uh, Cedar Creek area. And uh, it is just, when I walked in there, I felt such a new spirit. The spirit of God was new, was fresh. There, it was one of those meetings you walked into and you knew that you were no longer in last season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it felt when I got there. And uh, so, you know, it would be so awesome if you would tell us some of the things that created that atmosphere. Yeah, that's because um... it was a totally different atmosphere from anything I had sensed in the last seven years. Yeah, well, you know, Chuck, really, the prophets were taken through a pruning the last few years. And uh, one thing, we talked a lot about this pruning and the prophetic movement ha has come of age, but yet there were adjustments that the Holy Spirit wanted to make. And so we made those adjustments before we got to that meeting in our hearts and our lives. God spoke to us about humility. And uh, also the Lord spoke to us about the spirit of offense and that we cannot, we have to be unoffendable. And I'm working in that in my own personal life. And uh, so uh, another thing the Lord spoke to us was that we were to establish our Goshens. And I cannot tell you, you know, you know, check how it goes. Everyone sends in a prophetic word. And then I look at all these words to see what are the common threads. Well, over and over, the Lord said, that I'm going to give you directions to your Goshen. Do you, do you want to talk about that a minute also? Uh, that is so important. And um, Mike, I, even before we, while I was saying good morning to you guys, you mentioned something about stumbling. And we're, we're uh, an offense is like something in our path that causes us to stumble over. Mm -hmm. And the Lord uses that whole phrase in uh, Matthew uh, 11 when he's talking about the kingdom. And he's saying the least, John the Baptist up to that time had been the greatest, but the least uh, in, that enters into and embraces the kingdom of God, he will be, he will be greater mm -hmm. than even John the Baptist. And he said, there's one condition, don't stumble. Don't let offense cause you to stumble mm -hmm. over what is happening. And, you know, when I think of that, I think of what, what the Lord is doing new. Because even in that passage, you know, John had gotten, had started questioning whether the Lord was really who they were looking yeah. for. And I, I believe we are at a key place right now where we, we are seeing the new and we can't stumble over it mm. when we see it. We have mm. to keep moving through it. Mm. And uh, it's very similar to what you're saying about Goshen because, see, uh, uh, Joseph had been placed in that place of Egypt. And all of a sudden, the, it was time for reconciliation. It was time for divine recovery of his family. Time for them to realign. God had gotten it to that point. He didn't put Joseph in Egypt just to save Egypt. He put him there to save 
God's covenant plan and his covenant lineage for mm-hmm. the future. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. remember what Joseph said was, you're going to come down to Egypt with me after he went through the whole process of reconciliation. And you're going to be in Goshen, the very best part of what we now have to offer you. I think that is a real word for us. What you're hearing about Goshen, I believe we're going to be brought in and given some territory that isn't particularly promised territory, but is it is the territory where we will develop that will lead us into the fullness of the promise that God has right now. That's what I think about Goshen. It was where... God's covenant people multiplied. It was where they began to form their identity. It was where the tribes began to form together. And from that, then when it was God's timing to lead them in to the war for their promise, they were more of an identifiable unit. And I really think that's what God's doing with us right now. We've gone mm-hmm. through these three years that we've gone through and we're becoming an identifiable unit. And that's what I think I sensed when I walked into that prophetic gathering that you were hosting. I, I could identify there was a new tribe of prophets that had come together that were ready to move forward. Yeah. And I think this is happening all over the world. Uh, And now let me prophesy into that Goshen word. I felt the anointing there. And the Lord says, you're not going to miss your Goshen. Do not be anxious, says the Lord, with listening to the news and the times, because the Lord says, I am very interested in you as my child to find your place of provision. I am very interested. I am jealous for you to be taken care of, even as a father in the earth, a good father watches over the child, his own children and grandchildren, I am watching over you. So do not be disturbed by what you hear, for the Lord says, I am guiding you in ways you don't know. You don't even know how I'm guiding you because it's behind the scenes. And so you think you're just living your life, but as you're praying for me, I'm guiding you. I am bringing the circumstances together and I will provide. I will not forget you. I have not forgotten you. And the Lord says, you're moving towards your Goshen from the moment you asked me to give you directions. And the Lord also says to all of us that are listening, he's saying, uh, don't anticipate how I'm going to do this because Mm -hmm. I will use some unexpected people to position you to ready you for your future. Go with my path. Go with my path and do not try to position yourself. Once you are positioned I will prepare you for what is ahead, saith the Lord, and your provision will already be there for you to enter into. 